Have you ever dined on fungus? Well, if you've eaten mushrooms, you have. When Marco Polo returned to Venice in 1295, after spending 24 years in the Far East, he brought back with him Chinese pasta noodles. Pasta became popular so quickly that by the 15th century, it occupied a prime position in Italian cooking. In this same era, commercial production began in Naples. Italians today favor macaronis and raviolis with garlic and cheese. Every sticker begins with the work of art. The artist transfers the image to a computer and manipulates it until the desired effect is achieved. Next, a sheet of photopolymer goes onto an exposure machine. The technician places a negative of the art on top of the photopolymer sheet. He pulls plastic over the two and closes the machine's lid. Inside, a vacuum pulls the negative to the photopolymer. Intense ultraviolet light transfers the art to the photopolymer in seconds. It collects in a bin ready for the next step called beating the rag. Workers pour out the chopped up rag into a tub called a Hollander that is filling with water. This machine beats the material into a pulp. Its only moving part? A large roll weighing several tons, equipped with metal blades. Workers fill the Hollander with up to 800 pounds of rag. Once all the rag is in, the giant roll descends to begin the beating. Water pours down to soak the fabric as workers push it toward the roll. The machine now switches to a milling cutter. This tool shapes the countersink's four blades. A cross-drilling tool bores a hole for the two screws that'll hold the countersink to the drill. A tap cuts threads into the hole. Next, a tool called a dovetail cutter sharpens the blades. Then finally, a cutoff blade removes the tool. The same machine makes plug cutters. Its center drill makes a starting hole, but this time the main drill doesn't bore right through. It stops at the depth that the plug cutter is designed to cut. Just as before, the rough turning tool shapes the body and the milling cutter sculpts the four blades. A robot arm then places each bag into a cardboard box. The printing on this package displays the company logo, the nutritional content, the production date, and the heating instructions. So, next time you're looking for a salty snack, don't tie yourself up in knots. Just have a pretzel instead. Here, graphic artists adapt hand drawings of the face cards, adding color and a touch of regal class wherever needed. The next step is to make the printing plates. A computer-guided laser etches the design into the polymer surface of the printing plate. Entirely automated, this machine produces 30 plates an hour. To set up for a print run, workers pour several cans of thick cyan ink into the ink duct. The three other colors, same setup. When the printing press gets rolling, each fountain will disperse ink evenly via 16 rollers. Feeders transport the cardboard sheets one by one into the press. Each printing plate is mounted on a rotating drum. Rollers transfer the ink over the And now butterflies are formed. This mold cuts 7,500 of them a minute for a total of 450,000 an hour. The sheet of dough is two feet wide. It is produced in a steady stream and goes right to the cutting mold. The butterflies fall onto this conveyor to dry somewhat. 
Then they head toward the next production step. Certain short pastas, such as these butterflies and fusilis, have to be dried. So they're then put into this full dryer. Coming out of the dryer, the pastas are hard and ready for packaging. Here we see the ever-popular spaghettis being made. As with lasagnas, spaghettis are also dried vertically. Now, this automated machine places the spaghettis onto a cutting table and breaks them to the proper length. The spaghettis are now ready for packaging. Exact quantities to be bagged are determined by computer. Then the spaghettis go gently down this chute. These techniques have evolved over time, but the main ingredient remains the same, imagination.